Hello, my name is Coral Evans, and we are here today to talk about health. Very specifically, we're here today to talk about stress. And so we have here as a guest today, um, Ken Youngberg, who is with Mountain Heart. He is a, a health and wellness um, coach, and he's also a licensed clinical social worker. And so we thought we would bring you here today, um, Ken, to talk about health and stress and expectations in the holiday season and how we can really protect ourselves and, and stay well. Great. Uh, you know, I think during the holiday season, a lot depends on our expectations, and I think checking our expectations before we start the holiday season is very important because a lot of times if you have unrealistic expectations, you're going to set yourself up for failure and a lot of stress. And so I think that that's very important. You know, does everything have to be perfect? What, what are you searching for? You know, what's the real reason for the season? And how we enjoy our family and friends is very important. But the expectations, I think, are key in that your expectations, you're going to be disappointed if your expectations are too high or if you're a perfectionistic type personality and, you know, the, the table has to be set perfectly and you're trying to do too much. I think that's going to be detrimental to the real reason for the season. It's been very interesting this season because um, I can remember when Black Friday first started, um, you know, standing in line trying to get that particular toy or that particular item for um, a family member. Now it seems that we rolled into like Gray Thursday where it seems like it starts actually before Thanksgiving, kind of goes all the way through. Just the mailings, um, you know, the different things that you can buy, shop. Um, it's kind of stressful. And so how do you think people should react to things like that? Well, gift giving is very important. And, you know, I do not get caught up personally in, in that kind of the new sport for America, Black Friday, Great Thursday, as you mentioned. Um, that's one day I avoid going shopping. but. When I look for a gift, I'm looking for something that you know the person really wants and something that's meaningful. Maybe it, it's donation of time. Um, I'm not so much on the the material aspect of the gift, but you know if you're gonna if you're gonna do that competition, so to speak, and stand out in front of Walmart, you know, or or Best Buy, that's that's gonna add a lot of stress, and so. I try to avoid that type of stress by searching for gifts that are very meaningful mm -hmm. um, and, and not so much focused on the amount of money or, or the material aspect of it, but that's just my own personality. So I guess really what I'm hearing you saying is that as we move forward into the holiday season, one of the ways that we can really minimize our stress and actually enjoy the holiday season and the spirit and the intent of, of the time is really concentrate on the meaning what Absolutely. it means for us to concentrate on the um, the family and the friends and just just being there and being in in the moment so to speak and not necessarily about everything that's going along with it because the tree doesn't have to be necessarily perfect and the gift wrap doesn't have to be perfect and it's okay if maybe uh, there is a, a burnt sweet potato here or there type of a thing right I think really simplifying is the key and you know focus on the traditions um, that your family enjoys and make sure you're not over scheduling your family you know you may have to turn down a few invitations during the holiday season but really focus on what's important to your family let them know what the expectations are what the schedule is going to be and you know give yourself a break uh, make sure you're not scheduling things back to back or you have such a, a travel schedule that is is too complicated and doesn't give you any downtime because you know you can certainly s overbook yourself mm -hmm. Uh, but probably at the expense of the enjoyment of the family and that's going to cause a lot of stress on everyone so really kind of step back and you know write down your expectations what is the most important tradition for your family um, and that's I think key to making it less stressful. So stress is definitely something that we all deal with can you perhaps um, give us an idea of like what stress looks like I guess physically and um, how we can um, watch for those types of signs when it's something that we can deal with at home but when it's something we should check, um, ask for professional advice with. Sure. Um, irritable mood, uh, feeling cranky, muscle tension, you know everyone registers stress in different areas you know it can be uh, neck pain, um, you know your heart in, involved in that and high blood pressure for example and a lot of the negative habits of overeating or you know smoking drinking all of these these risk factors that um, 
we, we see at, at Mountain Heart that we deal with the patients with on a day in day out basis, the, we really want to focus on how the stress is, how the symptoms affect each person mm -hmm. and being aware of those symptoms and if there's something that needs to be checked out, you know, it's, it's better to, to tackle that before you end up in the emergency mm -hmm. room mm -hmm. and so that's very important. Um, but like I said, stress is, it's going to resonate different with each person. Um, and that's, that's what we try to look out for is, is how is that resonating with, with each person. And so can you maybe just tell us a little bit then about um, the Mountain Heart, the practice there and what you do there. I had an opportunity to speak with you um, before we came on, on camera and it was really fascinating. And so if you could share some of that with us as well. Sure. Um, I'm a partner with Mountain Heart and I provide wellness counseling and it's a new service that we're providing to address as, as I say, we're treating the whole person and not just the disease. And it's really giving credence to the fact that um, when we have a physical health problem, um, you know, you, you see your doctor and you, you deal with the mechanics of the heart and, and you know, blood pressure and, and things like that. But really, the person is dealing with a certain amount of stress. You can imagine if you've had a heart attack and now you're wondering what kind of exercise you can do. We have, you know, cardiac rehab to help that person uh, get back on track where they're monitored mm -hmm. and they you know they work out on the treadmill um, our, our doctors our cardiologists do uh, interventional procedures um, as well as just general cardiology and we also have a sleep center where we're looking to to assess how people are, are breathing and if they're stop if their breathing stops at night when they're sleeping because that has a huge effect on their heart and you know th the added stress to the heart is 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 something you need to be aware of mm -hmm. um, and so my role there is really to address the emotional needs the psychological needs of patients and they they may not be dealing with things like depression or anxiety but mm -hmm. depression and anxiety related to heart disease is is very high the the statistics mm -hmm. are very high obviously if you've had a heart attack you're going to feel a certain amount of stress uh, which can turn into you know anxiety disorder and depression and so I'm there to address that, but um, insurance also covers a counseling that is, uh, you know, to address how you're functioning. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a lot cheaper to address those items on the front end and help mm -hmm. a person cope with their situation. Maybe they're not clinically depressed, but they've had a heart attack, and giving them someone to talk to, all the studies have shown that that is most beneficial and reduces cost in the long run. Another uh, stress reducing idea is having a pet, especially if you're lonely, um, isolated. A pet can reduce uh, blood pressure. It, it, the emo your emotional well-being is higher in, in people who own pets, and so that's a great uh, strategy as well, is, is have a focus other than yourself, something you can love and take care of. So. And I've heard that. I've heard that individuals that have pets actually live longer, um, and so it's very interesting to, to hear that from a professional. Well, Ken, I'd like to thank you very much for coming here today and speaking to us about stress. And I look forward to having you on the show again in the future. Thank you very much. Stay tuned right here on Flagstaff Community Television for our next guest.